In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, we're going to be looking into the book of James, but I want to give a little setup first. And this actually pertains to the show itself. A few days ago, I put out an individual video, because if you haven't checked out my channel on YouTube, Tactics Radio, I have the full episodes like you're seeing right now. And then I also have smaller individual segments. I have the chaplain's reports. I'll have some of the daily doses of stupid. I just kind of pick and choose which ones I think are the best. And I may take a segment from the, the regular part of the show and, and bring that out every now and then. Usually do about two a day. Anyway, I did this particular segment on a new red flag law that was being put up in the state of Alabama. And I could quickly tell by the comments that it was getting that the vast majority of the people that were commenting on this had not actually watched the video or researched the topic in which I was discussing. Now, I've seen this countless times with people on the left, and, and a few times before this with people on the right. But usually it's far more obvious with people on the left that they haven't actually watched the video. They're commenting on the video, but they're commenting based on the headline. They haven't actually watched the video. And then I had a lot of my friends and people that I, I like and respect. I mean no harm towards them, but they were talking on a video and, and commenting on a video, chomping at the bit to comment on it, despite the fact that they hadn't actually watched it. And when questioning them about this, they said, oh, I don't have to watch it. I don't have to watch it to comment on it. It just amazes me that there are people that are wanting to comment on a video they haven't seen. It'd be like giving a book report on a book you never read. Well, I've heard about The Christmas Carol, and I've seen some of the movie adaptations, so I can write a book on it. And in this case, they hadn't even seen the movie versions or, or any of that. They were just commenting on an issue which they really had no knowledge of. And I think that it's so easy to fall into that trap. We live in an outrage culture where we see something that we don't like and we immediately start rattling our mouth off, even if we don't know the actual content behind the headline, if we haven't actually researched it. And one of the comments really stuck with me, which I don't entirely disagree with, but I think that it was being misapplied. That there are certain eternal truths, and I don't have to, essentially the guy said that I don't have to really question those. And I couldn't disagree more. There are certainly eternal truths. Things that are always true, have always been true, and are always going to be true. But those are the things that we need to question the most. As Thomas Jefferson once said, question with boldness even the very existence of God. For if there be a God, surely he prefers honest questioning to blindfolded fear. You'll rarely find people that have a stronger belief in the existence of God than me. And yet, I believe that this is something worth questioning. And that's an eternal principle. That's an eternal truth. Of course it is. And I believe that goes across the spectrum. But it reminded me of something else, and it actually reminded me of this scripture in James 1, 19-20. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. A couple things I wanted you to notice about this verse. First of all, James is talking to Christians. This is the Lord, through inspiration, talking to his people. Why would he tell a group of people whose mission in life is to spread the word about God and spread the gospel? 
why would he tell them to be slow to speak and quick to listen? That seems to not make any sense. Why wouldn't God want us to be very quick to speak and to tell people about Jesus? Because he understands that in order to get our message across correctly, we have to listen. There are eternal truths. There are things that are true and are always going to be true. That does not give us a right to ignore other arguments and other ideas. That does not give us an excuse to not listen to what other people have to say. If you look at the biblical example all through the conversion stories of Christ, if you're looking through the conversion stories in Acts, you'll notice a similar theme. They listened to what other people were saying. Paul, when he was in Athens, quoted their own philosophers and poets when he was preaching to them. Stephen was using the Old Testament when he was teaching to a group of Jewish elders. Jesus listened to the religious ideas and the life story of people when he was talking to them, be it the woman at the well or other people that he ran into that he converted. It always started with listening. You see, as Christians, I think to really be fulfilling the mission that God gave us, we have to not only be willing to listen, we have to look forward to it. We have to covet hearing other people and then respond and have our speech be seasoned with salt and inform them about the love of Jesus Christ. See, we don't need to be quick to speak. We need to want to get that information, to gain that knowledge, to understand the people that we're talking to before we start talking to them. That's the way to win souls. And on another level, it made me think about the way that we view free speech. And for those of you that have been watching this program for any amount of time, you know that I'm a big, big proponent of free speech. I mean, it's literally my career speaking to people about my ideas. So I'm a, I have a very strong vested interest in free speech, and I'm a free speech absolutionist. Free speech is, is all kinds of speech, even if I don't like it, even if I disagree with it, even if I think it's dangerous. As long as you're not actually calling for violence of somebody, free speech is still protected. No exceptions. But here's the thing. As concerned as I am about what universities and governments and big corporations like the big tech companies are doing to free speech, and, and that is a legitimate area of concern for me. I've spent a lot of time talking about it. I wonder if sometimes we get so worried about that that we forget the most important part of free speech is listening. Because it doesn't matter how good this exchange of ideas are. It doesn't matter how much diversity of thought that we have if we are unwilling to listen to new ideas. If we close ourselves off and say, nope, don't want to hear it. I want to rattle off about my free speech, but I don't want to hear any ideas that might be different than mine or don't confirm what I already believe. It doesn't matter if we have absolute free speech. It doesn't matter if we win the fight for free speech against the universities, against the governments, against the big tech companies. Even if we have absolute free speech and have plenty of platforms to put it out there, it doesn't matter a bit if we are unwilling to listen to one another. And if that is true, we have free speech all that we want. It's not going to benefit us. A marketplace of ideas only works if there are people that are willing to be swayed by them. I mean, we call it a marketplace of ideas because that's what we're doing. We're exchanging. What's the good of having a marketplace if nobody's buying anything? It's great to have the venue. It's great to have the storefront. If you're not having anybody buying anything or anybody selling anything, then do you look good? And so for that exchange to take place, we need to follow the advice of the Bible. We have to be quick to listen slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it?
Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it. 